is what we have today. An elm that's in slight decline and this row in. Right over the greenhouses. Got the mupe again. It's the chip and he wants the logs over there. Be sweet. Because with a mute, you've got, you want a, it's an acronym, LUST, L-U-S-T. So that's lower boom, upper boom, slew, and telly out. That's sort of the order you want to be uh, operating the, the mute with. So this is the upper boom, uh, lower boom, sorry. You're going to have to slew. Get out of the way. This tree here. That's probably enough lower. My upper is in the right position, so I'm going to go straight to telly. You can skip that order. I'm going to get the rowing or mountain ash first. Flowers there, so we want to avoid them. Same as the traditional tree right now. You don't have to do it this way. But starting from the bottom. Ian doing his pro thing, doing a bit of protection there. Need a good groundsman. Keep everything going smoothly. Keep everything safe. It's amazing how much good groundsmen do without you even realising. They're like in and out before you're ready to throw the next branch. They're preventing injury, uh, injuries and damage to the property without you even realising. They make everything so much smoother. really don't want this to crack off. I've done my step cut quite large. Normally you might struggle to snap that off but because you're in a mute you can get that leverage and use the mute to your advantage. This is something you can't do with regular climbing and you can get right to the top. It snaps off nice and easy and that was a large step cut that otherwise wouldn't snap off. set back quite far back because we're nice on that stable ground um, but I've maximised uh, my lift here. This actually has a third um, boom in the bucket just to get you out that little bit extra. You want to make use of that. It's always a compromise. If you're right under the tree um, you can get higher but then you've Mute to avoid, whereas if you're a bit further away, you've got the reach. The mute's in a nice safe position. Yeah. yeah. 
Hoop's in a nice position and you can work without worrying. So it's a compromise trying to get um, it all right. You don't want to be setting up loads of time. Your pain. Waste time. Sometimes it's necessary. Almost like picking the right anchor point in a tree. Could save a lot of time picking the right one. Tactically, picking this one first, it gives us a bit more room to do the one above. Bit of a warm up as well. Feeling a bit beaten by the sun today. Yep. It's hard when you start off muping, it's hard to get your head around the controls, but the more you do it, when it becomes muscle memory, it's better. Actually going to come in a little bit. There's nice flowers there, so I'm actually going to return myself in. Makes the throw a little bit easier. This is fine as long as your branch. You need to be worried about the weight of the branch you're taking off. Yep. But it'll say on the bucket how much weight you can do. Max hundred. Um, 400 newtons, 230 kg, that's of a man, roughly 80, 80, and 70 of tools. I'm only 65, so that's over exaggerating my weight as well. Maybe, maybe 75 with my kit. put it in the bucket if you're afraid you can't make the throw just get yourself a bit closer use the mute again anything over 80 kilograms is, is, is a bit too much as long as it weighs less than a person you'll be fine and you don't shock load you don't want to be lower enough than you yep so I've set up in a different spot Boom straight out, we don't need to slew, we're a bit pinned in from this uh, dead dying sycamore that I do on it from Holly. You almost tackle it differently, you want to cut into the tree, so I'm plunging in, I'm going to clear a root and then cut outwards, and sometimes up and then down, up down. Um, but as in all of these, and this limb here, and this limb here, and this limb here will allow me to then penetrate deeper into the crowd and get these back limbs. So you're almost like side swiping it and just taking it out as you go in. Quite heavy, Elm. A lot of people might think, why are you using your hand saw so much? But with a sharp, sharp hand saw, you can cut a lot with ease. I do try and use I chainsaw as much as I can but I see a lot of people use it too much and I see a lot of people use the handsaw too much it's a perfect balance um, finding the balance of using both tools for what they're designed for not overusing one or the other again not trying to get crushed so you want to look around when you're moving up not to get crushed on your head I want to be ambidextrous, use your left hand for things. Don't just use your right hand. It helps with even wear on your body. If 
are always counting heads to see one, two, so I know there's no one there. You've got to look out for clients though as well. Again, this is a larger piece right over that greenhouse so i use the handsaw to bring myself in to where i want to cut so there's less strain on the body and plunk a hoe yeah thinking that this is a different wood now it's not the uh, rowing that I've just been cutting this saw but can't quite cut fast enough when you're doing a dismantle but um, vertical limbs it's fine step cuts you can handle it you just work to the saw's power This sort of size is so good. Right over this custom built greenhouse now. I'm having to finish off the rowing um, I couldn't get close enough because uh, of the shed so it's got very peely uh, bark so you can use it to peel to help it down rather than wasting your energy on a gob cut with the Dutch Alms disease and ash dieback and things like that going round killing all the uh, nice mature trees and I, I like the elms they're pretty a way you can identify an elm quite easily um, is to see how they don't connect perfectly on the leaf one under the other one whereas a normal leaf would be more 
more like that, won't it? Yeah. Go down. Don't line up perfect. Timber, but there's no reason for me to not get rid of this piece of timber now. So I'm going to move on and get this right down to allow me to penetrate into the ground like I was talking about previously. What? Is that smoking? maxed out here the option is to I think I can take here but the option is to take bigger or move closer both have the negative bigger more dangerous and fully extended too much weight uh, on the fully extension you can risk tipping um, and moving forward cost time so it's always <laughs> to do things quicker is always more dangerous usually um, and then it, it's risk management and when I say more dangerous I'm talking tiny percentages but over your whole career tiny percentages can catch you out um, so I guess it's trying to be consistent so I'll, I'll judge it as I go along um, but for this one definitely I can get with no problem at all um, it's this far one that might be an issue so I'll evaluate it as I go along on your ego not get rushed be efficient rather than <laughs> trying to be quick if that makes sense you'll save the time by being efficient rather than rushing on that extension no warning lights or alarms went on which is a good sign oh, 
was doing my gob in a couple of pieces then because even the gob cut can smash the glass it's not something uh, you really think about but something you've got to be what you got to watch and using a little noggin. Like I'm saying, I would like to set these smaller, but I've maxed out the mute, so. It's just like a lot of things in life. You wish, if only it's just a little bit bigger, a couple more inches. It's not the size of the mute, it's how you use it. Doing that gob cut in stages to almost turn it into dust because dust won't break the, the uh, greenhouse but a, a big chunk of wood will. that hook I can then hook in this would have been such a horrible job without a mute myself because it's going to be a bit of shock I've wedged myself so I'm a bit more static wouldn't advise really doing this but you read it there's a sling on this one here's a good example rigging in general you go to rig this piece, thinking, yeah, it'll manage that. It goes in, hits the stem, and these dead pieces will shatter, and that fucking break things, even though the piece could be fully tied off, rigged off, um, with rigging line, these pieces can break. I've actually broke a, um, a tile on a roof doing exactly that. So I tend to remove them, if possible, um, prior to even doing a gob cut and hold if I gob cut and hold here and, and don't let go, these pieces could snap off quite easily. Um, so it's always something to watch. There's always something that catches you out, as long as it doesn't happen to fly.
Bruno. Bruno. <laughs> oh, hello. He knows his name. Yeah. Let's do this bit of sight.
done that back. I don't want to hit anything. How, how tall are you? you? You could probably cut yourself from there and I snap it off maybe. Yeah. He said He said it's not connected in any way. Right. Like screwed in. Okay. But you're a lot taller than me actually. You're not that far off being able to cut it. Yeah, put it there. Uh, I can lift this off. No, oh, no, it's screwed in. No, I probably could lift. Yeah, I can lift that. There's a hole there. Quite a good day. Yeah. 